It has been a very emotional week uh, for the Provencher family and, of course, for all of Quebec as the remains of nine-year-old uh, Cédric Provencher were finally discovered all these years later to, to give us a better perspective and better understanding, of course, of what is going on with the case and with this family. Our Dominic Fazioli, news producer, joining us once again on the BT Catch. Dom, so many questions, but first and foremost, so much emotion involved here for, for everyone, really, right? It seems like the whole province is mourning with the family. I mean, it was the one of the biggest missing person cases ever in Quebec history. I mean, there was a point, I think, in 2007, 2008, you couldn't walk anywhere without seeing her face. Her face. Everywhere, plastered around. It's incredible. And so, yeah. you know, obviously such a sad moment. Everyone was hoping for at least a different outcome. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about, though, this investigation. Let's talk about... You know, now people are very, very angry and they want to find this killer. How, where is the investigation on that? Are we any closer? I, I don't know. Uh, police, police had a press conference on Thursday. And the reason I say we don't know, because they're not saying much. Very tight left. All, all they're saying is that it's progressing. But what was interesting about that press conference, they're saying since the remains were found, uh, this press conference was six days later, they said they received 200 new tips. And that isn't that a little strange? It's like, very strange. Like to for me. the last eight years, it's sort of been a cold case, and then all of a sudden they find the remains. Then people have new information, and oh, like, and what's strange, Don, we should say, is the entire time that she was missing, her mom kept holding these press conferences, and her dad saying somebody must have seen something. So you must wonder where those people were these last eight years, right? Any anything substantial that we know of coming from those tips? The the whole investigation goes back to this red Acura. If you remember, in September 2007, about a month and a half after she disappeared, this bit of information came out, and it's still relevant today. The abductor was driving a red Acura TSX. It's a four-door sedan. It has shiny chrome handles. Uh, the, the, the suspect is a, man, a French-speaking man between 30 and 40 years old. How do they know that? The girl was abducted in, on July 31st, 2007. It appears that two days before that, he did... He apparently tried to abduct other children, as many as three or four kids in that With same With the same ruse, right? Help me find, the, help me yeah, find yeah. my dog. I, I'm searching for a dog. You know, the, the, the oldest trick in the book. He tried it apparently a few days yeah. before. So now people are going to hear this, and they're going to hear Red Acura, uh, very specific, a French-speaking man. All these clues, where, where, why haven't they found this person is the million-dollar uh, question. Yeah, uh, well, uh, some police sources are saying that they have found the suspect or they think they are, they're pretty sure who You've this man is. You've spoken to someone. You've spoken yes. to a source who says what exactly? He was involved with the investigation at the, at the outset in 2007, 2008, and I think they've, they've zeroed in on one or possibly two suspects who drives a red Acura, who lives in the Trois-Rivières area, who fits everything that they're looking for. Um, it looks like, it sounds like, they don't have enough evidence or they can't advance the case past that. Well, it, before when there were no remains, it was hard to tie anyone to anything, right? Yeah, no body, no found crime. The body. Yeah. I mean, hopefully this will, you know, uh, this will bring the case to a sa another level. But you know what? They have the remains. I'm sure they're doing forensic tests. But what will they find eight years later? Like, is there anything there? Is there anything left? Is I there mean, anything left? I mean, yeah. there, there is a quote saying that the bones do talk. There is something that you can extract from the crime scene. But... Uh, so far, it, it's unclear at this yeah. point. And a final note, I mean, as someone who's followed this story for years, you know, a lot is being made about the fact that uh, the Provences are not as vocal as they were during the search. What do you make of that? I mean, to many people, it's just grieving, right? It is grieving. Yeah, they were very public like for eight years, and everybody appreciated their time. Um, but I think you have to let them grieve. Um, what? <laughs> well, let me just share something with you. The, f the grandfather, I think, is the only person who's spoken uh, in the last few days, named Henri Provencher. Um, for the last eight years, he has not given up. A lot of people don't know that in the Trois-Rivières area, he's rented commercial space. He's, he's kept a command center all this time. He has internet plugged in, fax machines. He, he's set up a 1-800 number. He follows leads. He's sort of become his own Police detective. Force, yeah. yeah, And he's not giving up. You know, like back then it was a missing person case. Now he's, he's doing his own murder investigation. And... You know, your heart bleeds for this man. Like, yeah. he really wants closure. And, you know, he's, he's an older man. He's 70-something yeah. years old. So I don't think he wants to die until he finds some answers. Well, everybody wants answers here, especially, of course, the Provencher family. Dom, thank you so much for joining us. Again, Dominic Fazioli, our news producer, with the latest on Cédrica Provencher.